In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I heard about a teacher recently who did a training day to reassure children about death. To help children understand what death is, the teachers were advised to use the following demonstration. They were told to take a lighted candle and say, this flame, see this flame, this candle, it stands for granny. And then they were told to blow out the candle. And they told, and this is what happens when granny dies. Gone, vanished, and so quickly. Don't be afraid, children. God helped the children subjected to this teaching. But it's interesting how it reversed our Christian practice. What we do is spontaneously light candles, not blow them out. We light candles for the dead. We're certain they haven't vanished, you know, like the flame when it's blown out. Their moment of death wasn't like blowing out a candle or unplugging a computer. It was rather a culmination of their existence, the act by which they passed from life to the fullness of life. And nothing, maybe, is more characteristic of Christianity than our belief that death has been destroyed. We believe that the promise made to Isaiah has been fulfilled. He will swallow up death in victory, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces, and re the rebuke of his people shall be taken away from off all the earth, for the Lord has spoken it. By Christ's rising from the dead, God has saved us from death. The mourning veil has been lifted. Never again will it weigh us down with dank, heavy darkness, unless we pull it down over our faces. Even if we pull it down, the sun's shining. We can refuse to see, but the fact remains. Death has been overcome, destroyed forever. Love really is stronger than death. This is our hope as Christians. It fills us too with a kind of earnestness. We have work to do before we die. Our thoughts, words, deeds are not trivial things. They matter. They don't dissolve away into thin air. They leave traces. We carry them into eternity, where we shall give an account of our life in time. Even there, however, even carrying the burdens of our betrayals, love keeps us safe if we let it. Remember what Paul wrote to the Romans. Having died to make us righteous, is it likely that Christ would now fail us to save us from wrath? No. What we celebrate today on the Feast of All Souls is the triumph of hope. Even the dead who at their passing are unprepared to meet their maker are covered by the mantle of his mercy. Their flame lives on. And maybe by our prayers we breathe on that flame, help it to drink up the oxygen of Christ's love and rise up pure and strong. On no other day of the church's year do we see the bridge that links this world to the next more clearly. We see that our loved ones are not lost to us, nor we to them. We pray too for the unloved, the unremembered, that the whole church may be bound together in charity, embraced by Christ's sacrifice. For his victory holds us all, the living and the dead. Those gathered here and those whom we love but see no longer. And this is the vital testimony we have to give to this positive but hopeless world of ours. Amen.